Hey, get the gloss. I'm Dr. Tara Swart, neuroscientist and medical doctor. Today I'm going to talk to you about the phenomena surrounding breath holding. So holding your breath for a long time, sort of forgetting to exhale, or shallow breathing are both signs of stress because they're the body's ancient way of responding to a threat. So when you had to run away from a predator, it was helpful to have rapid, shallow breathing. And so when you breathe in that way, the fright, flight, fight response, then the vagus nerve that's attached to your diaphragm and sends messages to your brain basically tells your brain that there's a threat and that you should feel very stressed and get away from it. And that kicks off all sorts of cascades around your body in terms of hormones and neurotransmitters. If you remember to breathe deeply, take some deep breaths during the day, and maybe even focus on the fact that your exhale is longer than your inhale. And there are many other forms of breathing that might suit you, like box breathing or breathing in for three, holding for three, out for three, or three, four, five, six breathing. So have a look around at what suits you, but basically exhaling longer than you inhale sends that reverse message from your lungs to your brain that actually I'm relaxed, that your body should be in the parasympathetic state, which is relaxation, rather than the sympathetic state, which is that fight, flight, flight. And so what we're seeing more recently is something that's been referred to as tech apnea. So sleep apnea is when you basically um, forget to breathe in your sleep and then you wake up with a terrible in-breath or a snort. And tech apnea is when you're looking at social media and you forget to breathe. And so I'm seeing three forms of this. One is the expectation of likes or followers or comments. And so with the expectation, you breathe in, you reach for your phone, and you literally forget to exhale because you're so um, you know, taken up by what you're looking at. So that either then leads to a feeling of disappointment, which is a threat to your brain socially. So then it would make sense that you do shallow breathing. And then finally, um, if it leads to a state of excitement where you've you know, seen something that you really like, then that can also have a very activating effect on your brain and your body. And finally, of course, there's the um, sense of comparison, which can also seem threatening. So the only way you can turn this around is to focus on your breath and make sure that you're giving your brain the signal for how you want to feel.